Good day everyone. So for today's lecture, we will discuss equilibrium or particularly it's the first condition of equilibrium. So before we discuss the first condition of equilibrium, let's talk about the three Newton's law of motion. Now, the first law is the law of inertia. It states that a body at rest will remain at rest, a body in motion will remain in motion unless acted upon by an external force. So, let's focus first on the first statement in which a body at rest will remain at rest unless acted upon by an external force. So, here in the picture, I have a body. Okay, let's say this is a body, it has a mass, and it is on the top of a surface or a floor. Now, the body is at rest because the velocity is zero. Now, according to the first law of motion, a body will remain at rest unless acted upon by an external force. So, this force should be acted on our mass, and this force should be exerted by an external force which is coming from another body or another object or you can imagine you are pushing this box so you are the other body that exerting a force to move this box is your hand so it means this force is exerted by another object towards to the box so therefore since there is a force that is acting on a body there is a tendency of this box to accelerate to the direction of the force the idea here is the direction of the external force or the net force is also the direction of the acceleration. Now, if we will in increase the force that is exerted on the body, so definitely we expect that the acceleration is bigger compared to the acceleration before when the, the force is lesser. And here, in this relationship, we can say that acceleration is directly proportional to force. Let's assume the force is constant. So, this is the force that is exerted on the body, okay? And this is the acceleration of the body when this force is exerted to our box. So, what if we have the same force but we increase the mass? If we will increase mass and we are just exerting the same force, definitely the acceleration will decrease. And in this relationship, we can say that acceleration is inversely proportional to mass so it means if the mass increases the acceleration will decrease so if the mass is lesser the acceleration is greater so they are inversely proportional so this relationship is the second law of motion which is the law of acceleration and from this relationship we will have now the formula for the acceleration in which acceleration is equal to force but divided by to its mass and from this we can have the for formula the basic formula for force in which force is equal to mass times acceleration in which mass is in kilogram and the acceleration is meter per second squared so therefore the unit for force can be either of this kilogram meter per second squared or we can use n which is the newton Okay, so that is the formula for force based on the second law of motion. The second statement on the first law states that a body in motion will remain in motion unless acted upon by an external force. So, so here our box is moving to the right. We can say that this box is in equilibrium. Okay, even though it's moving, it is in equilibrium because the velocity is constant. So, if we will look now to our two diagrams. So, we have a diagram here which is a body which is at rest. So, the velocity of that is equal to zero. And a body which is uh, moving to the right with the velocity which is not equal to zero. But still, these two bodies experiencing equilibrium because for the first body, if the velocity is equal to zero, the acceleration is also equal to zero because the formula for acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity divided by the change of time. If the velocities are zero, definitely the acceleration is also equal to zero. And if we will go back to the formula of force, so the force is equal to mass 
times acceleration if the acceleration is zero definitely the sum the force is also equal to zero and based on our definition for first condition of equilibrium if the force acting on the system is equal to zero it is now experiencing an equilibrium now if there are so many forces acting on our box or are acting on our system and after applying these forces and still our velocity is still at rest and therefore the acceleration is still zero so therefore the summation of these forces is also equal to zero therefore this box or our system with two forces with forces applied on it is still experiencing an equilibrium now for the object uh, moving which is the velocity is not equal to zero but if the final velocity and the initial velocity are constant still the acceleration of that is also equal to zero because if the final velocity and the initial velocity from the formula of acceleration are just the same so final velocity minus initial velocity which are the same it's also equal to zero so therefore from the formula of force which is equal to ma if the acceleration is still zero so hence our system is experiencing an equilibrium now if there are other forces acting on our system and after applying these forces and our system is, is still moving with a constant velocity and it's not changing so therefore it's not accelerating so therefore the summation of forces is still equal to zero and it's it's still in equilibrium so it means for a body at rest and a body in motion will still be in equilibrium unless there is a net external force acting on it body in motion with constant velocity is in, still in equilibrium unless acted by an external force so for example our object is moving to the right and there is a friction on the surface so that is also another force we will talk about the different types of forces later so there is a force that is acted by the surface and that is uh, what we called f okay let's say this is called f and this uh, force is opposes the sliding so late, okay, later on this force will make our body or an object stop that is the idea of a body in motion will remain in motion unless acted upon by an external force and this external force is acted by the surface which is uh, a friction okay so for today we will discuss the mechanical equilibrium mechanical equilibrium is the state of an object or system of object in which there are no changes in motion this is the first law of motion uh, for this discussion we will talk about two kinds of equilibrium so we have the first condition of equilibrium in which the summation of forces is equal to zero uh, the second one is the second condition of equilibrium in which the summation of moment or the summation of torque is equal to zero for forces we will talk about the summation of forces on x is equal to zero the summation of forces on y and the summation of forces on z for three-dimensional problems well for the second condition of equilibrium we will talk about moments that is acting clock counterclockwise okay and the forces that is acting clockwise so these are the directions for the first condition and the second condition of equilibrium but for now we will focus on the first condition of equilibrium since the first condition of equilibrium talks about forces let's define first what is a force now a force is defined as a push or a pull upon an object resulting from the object's interaction with one another so it means force can only be present uh, if there are two objects one object is the one who is acting a force and the other one the one who is experiencing the force so here okay so in this case so therefore the red one okay exert the force to the blue box and the blue box experiences the force of the red box okay so if we will uh, isolate the system we can only have here the blue box and the red force of our red box so based on the third law of motion every action which is a force an action force there is an equal but opposite reaction so it means if the red box is exerting a force that is equal to 10 newton which is to the left the blue box will also 
apply a reaction force which is also equal to 10 newton and that is to the right. So this is the third law of motion which is the law of interaction in which in every action, there is an equal but opposite reaction. And a force is any influence that can cause an object to accelerate if there is a net force acting on the body. Let's uh, identify now what are the forces that can be present in our prob problem. There are two types of forces. We have contact forces. Uh, for contact forces, these are forces that involve direct contact between two objects. So they need to be in contact before they can act to another object. While for the long-range forces, these are forces that act over a distance. Even though they are separated by a certain distance, they can still act a force towards another object. So in this case, the, the blue box is not touching to the red box. Still, the blue box can act a force towards the red box. And vice versa, the red box also can act a force towards to the blue box. So let's focus first, what are the long-range forces? So the first long-range force is the force acted on magnets. So we call this as magnetic force in which, again, so forces cannot be present if there are only one object. So the other one will exert the force and the other one will be experiencing the force. So here, first magnet acted a yellow force. So let's say this is a yellow force on my magnet too. So, since this is south and south, they have the tendency to repel. Okay? So, there is a two interaction we expect for magnets. They can either attract or attraction or they can repel or repulsion. Okay? So, in this case, since they, they have the same pole, so that is south and south, so they, they tend to repel. This magnet one will try to push this magnet two away. So, that is the direction of the force. So, as I said before, a uh, force can either be a push or a pull. Okay? In this case, this is a push. Okay? So, at the same time, of course, so since this is two objects, according to the third law, in every action, there is an equal but opposite reaction. Also, the magnet 2 is also exerting a force to magnet 1, and that force is equal uh, in magnitude but opposite in direction. So the force of magnet 1 on 2 is just equal to the force of magnet 2 on magnet 1. Okay? So, that is for the magnetic force. The next one is for charges, in which this is what we call the electric force. For charges, we have positive charge and negative charge. So, positive charges, these are the charges that has lesser electrons. And for negative charge, these are an object that has greater electrons. Okay, so these are the definition of charges. So, again, charges can either be attraction or there are also repulsion. Okay, so here, if we will look, since they are positive and negative, the interaction here is what we call attraction. So, the positive charge will try to pull the negative charge towards to the positive charge. So, this is what we call attraction. So, the force of the positive charge towards to the negative charge is going to the left because uh, the positive charge tries to attract the negative charge. At the same time, the negative charge is also trying to attract the positive charge toward to its position. The magnitude of these two forces are just the same but they are opposite in direction. Now, for the gravitational force, there are only one kind of interaction that is happening to any mass on the top of to any entity that has gravity and that is that is only attraction now gravitational force is also called weight the direction of the gravitational force or uh, weight is always towards to earth so for example if there is a mass here so still the direction of that is towards to the surface if the mass is still here so it means it's still going to the surface so so uh weight Okay, can be computed as, so from the formula, force is equal to mass times acceleration. And here, the weight can be computed as mass times the acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity, so that is mg. Okay, so weight is equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meter per second squared. 
So, these are the three long-range uh, forces, but we will focus only on gravitational force for this uh, topic. Now, for contact forces, there are five kinds of contact forces that we will discuss for this topic. Here we will have the tension force. Tension force is always acted by a string, chain, and rope. This is the direction of the tension force. It's always pulling the mass going up in any direction, okay? That is the direction of the tension force. Well, for the normal force, this is a force acted by the surface. The normal force is always perpendicular to the surface, so that is a direction. And the point of interaction of normal force is from the bottom of this box to the surface. So that is the point of interaction. Well, for the tension, it is the part where the rope is tied on the mass. So that is the point of interaction of the tension. The other one is friction. So if our object is sliding to the right, so there is a tendency of the surface to resist this sliding. Okay? And that is what we call friction. So friction is always opposes the sliding. So if the sliding is to the right, the friction is to the left. And friction is always parallel to the surface. Okay, unlike in the normal force, normal force is perpendicular to the surface, while friction is parallel to the surface. And the symbol for friction is italized lowercase f. Another one is the applied force. Now, the applied force, sometimes this is exerted by human. Usually, if there is only applied force, it will cause uh, the object to accelerate. So, the direction of the net force of the applied force is also the direction of the acceleration. And lastly, okay, the spring force, which is force that is exerted by a spring. Okay, so spring force and the friction force are the two uh, kinds of forces that, that is dependent their condition. For example, friction force, we have to account to the type of surface. And for the spring force, we have to account to the type of spring or the stiffness of the spring. So we will discuss this more on the next topic.